Hola, this is the Wednesday Night Night Delight, Johnny Mundo, and you're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio. You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio, featuring the interactive interview, courtesy of WrestlingEpicenter.com. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Ross Foreman with GFW. I'd like to welcome you to this week's media teleconference. Before we welcome our special guest, I do have an update for you. As many of you do know, yesterday on our website we posted a statement, and I'd like to read it for you if you didn't have a chance to see that. Effective immediately, Jeff Jarrett is taking a leave of, an indefinite leave of absence from his position as Chief Creative Officer to focus on personal matters. Jeff will be available on a consultative basis as needed. That is our statement. That is our only statement. During this teleconference, myself and Johnny Impact will not be taking any questions whatsoever on the topic and or Jeff Jarrett. So we ask you to please uh, respect the wishes and, of course, please respect uh, Jeff Jarrett's privacy. That said, it's a, it's a pleasure to welcome one of the newcomers to GFW, a, uh, I can't even call him a three-time champion in AAA, but rather a three-belt holder, the electrifying Johnny Impact. Welcome to uh, the weekly teleconference, Johnny. Hey, everybody. Uh, happy to be here. This is my first weekly teleconference, as uh, you probably gathered. Um, not even really sure how this works, but uh, I'd like to say I'm really happy with my experience so far at Impact. I've uh, been blown away by the level of professionalism in the locker room, and I'm really happy to work with some of some of my old friends like Bobby Lashley and Chris Masters and um, NDC3, and then um, and also some of the, the newer talent. Um, I mean, I guess Loki and Eddie Edwards aren't new talent, but they're uh, new, new friends of mine. Um, Eddie Kingston, LAX, Conan Amigo way back. I can talk about the whole roster at length, but I'll just cut it there and then uh, move on to say that uh, thoughts and prayers go out to uh, anyone that's been affected by Hurricane Harvey. I know I've got some family that has been, and um, it's uh, such a large number of people that have been affected that I feel like just about everyone in the country knows somebody that's uh, that's being affected right now, and um, that sucks. Johnny, if we can uh, ask you to expand on that uh, briefly, because I know you and I have talked. You you do a family down in Houston. Yeah, um, I have a, I've, man, I have a, like a, quite a number of cousins in Houston, and um, a couple of their houses were uh, not flooded, but uh, water just went up to <laughs> right up to their doorstep, and um, which is nice because um, in lieu of the house being flooded, uh, one of my cousins that has kids said. Uh, <laughs> Her kids loved it actually. <laughs> uh they don't understand that the the uh, the water is, is damaging like all the real estate and the flooring and uh creating a huge mess because to them it just seems kind of fun. But um I think that's gonna wear off because of basically like the widespread um disorganization that's gonna follow and uh the amount of cleanup that is required. Um I mean I'm I was talking to a, another buddy of mine, Jason David Frank, who's, who lives in Houston, who's also got a, a ton of uh, people down there that have been affected. We were supposed to do a, a show together, actually in Nashville, Ross, um, <laughs> the other week, and uh, he ended up having to pull out last minute because the hurricane had hit. But uh, stuff stuff like that, just it, it sucks because it seems like it's out of your control and there's nothing really you can do about it, but but uh, helps uh, people in your life that have been affected by it. All righty. Well, of course, we send our uh, thoughts and prayers from GFW to everybody in the Houston area who's been impacted and certainly uh, say prayers for everybody potentially impacted by uh, Hurricane Irma as uh, she bears through the Atlantic at this point. That said, uh, we're going to move into some questions for Johnny. I will – a couple – uh, business matters before we get going here. Uh, when, when we open it up for questions, I ask you uh, identify yourself and your media outlet. Once again, I also ask one question and one question alone. We have a lot of people who want to talk to Johnny. Please do not get back in line uh, in the queue for another question until I give you the uh, heads up. 
is we certainly want to have everybody have a chance to, to talk to Johnny. And I will tell you, I don't normally tell you who's going to be on next week. However, I think it's very important in light of what's going on in the last 24 hours at our company. Uh, we're really happy to announce that uh, next week, right here on the teleconference, Big John, Scott Demore, and Sanjay Dutt will be on this teleconference to talk about where this company is going creatively uh, through Bound for Glory and beyond. Uh, it's going to be a great teleconference. You do not want to miss that. Big John, Scott Demore, and Sanjay Dutt. All right, so again, if you have a question, I, I believe the queue is uh, uh, star six, and I will uh, open it up for some questions now. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Hi there, this is James from Steel Chair Magazine. This is for Johnny. Is there anyone on the Impact roster at the moment that you really want to face? So there's uh, some of the guys in the X Division, Desmond Xavier, Trevor Lee. Uh, hey, J hey, Johnny, let I've... me cut you off for one second. Start over in sure. your answer. I, 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 I didn't have you... Uh... Uh, unmuted for a second there. So if you'd answer his question again, I, I, that was my error. Okay. Um, sorry about that, James. There's a, one of the most exciting things to me about going to a new promotion like GFW is uh, exactly what this question is about. There's a ton of people on the roster that I've never had the chance to wrestle. So um, you've got guys, X Division guys like Trevor Lee and Desmond Xavier, both of whom I think are super talented that I've never had the opportunity to work um, as Johnny Impact, that I, I think we could uh, we could tear down the Impact Zone together. Then um, there's a guy like uh, like Bobby Lashley that uh, man, him and I were real close when he came to uh, to OVW back in 2004, and uh, we even rode together when I first started on the road. He started at the same time, but we we haven't worked for the same company in over 10 years now, and um, he's grown as a performer and um, developed his own specific style. And I feel the same about myself. And it'd be really interesting to me to see how we match up now. Um, then uh, clearly the current champion, Eli Drake, um, I think uh, has been underrated for a long time. But certainly not in his, his mind. <laughs> he, he thinks he's the best thing since sliced bread. But um, in, a, in the eyes of the wrestling community, I think he's been underrated. And... Um, I would love the chance to have a a, a true one-on-one -on -one matchup to uh, to put my skills to the test against him in the ring. Um, how about you, James? Uh, James? Can you talk back right now, or are you muted? Yes, now we can. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, sorry, I muted myself for safety. <laughs> oh, no worries. Um, is, there, uh, what, is there anyone? What, what was the like question? You, is there anyone on the roster that you think that uh, you'd like to see me wrestle? Um, you've, you've pretty pretty much been exact with who I thought you would, you would want to face, and I'm I'm pretty excited to see well, what you do in Impact because it's a a pretty pretty big change, and it's going to be interesting to see what you do in there. I've been I couldn't agree more. Um, I feel like my style from uh, Lucha Underground and AAA, the uh, and independent wrestling is a uh, is a little bit faster paced than um, some of the, the current roster. And um, that, to me, like, anytime you have a difference of styles and a difference of attitudes, that, to me, usually creates the most interesting matchups. Uh, hello, this is uh, Riju from Sportskira uh, from India, long-time fan of yours. Uh, my question is, how was it working uh, uh, like how was it working in the television show called glow uh, how did the whole role come about and for non wrestlers how were the girls <laughs> how were the girls in glow um, the girls uh, yes. the girls in glow were amazing um, I'll, I'll start there like the uh, are all very like hard working and beautiful obviously 
But um, I think what really made that show work was the camaraderie between the girls on the cast. They had a, a, a really a really fun and tight relationship between themselves. And they were also, because they're so secure of themselves and their abilities, welcoming to outsiders like me. And I was a, I was a guest star on the first episode, played Salty the Sack Johnson, <laughs> which is one of my favorite wrestling names ever. <laughs> and um, I really felt uh, welcomed by, uh, by certainly all the cast members, um, the, uh, the girls, and also by, uh, by Mark Marin. Um, but Mark Marin one of the funniest dudes ever. And um, Carly, Liz, Jenji, all the other writers, creators, and EPs in the show um, really made that a, a positive environment. And I think that's the secret to a show's success is the positivity. And that's another thing that I noticed about the GFW locker room in its current iteration. Um, everyone feels like they know what they're there for. They feel like they have something to offer. And I didn't feel any negativity when I, when I walked into the impact zone, I just felt like I was, I was, I was coming to like a high school reunion party. Like I was hanging out with a bunch of my old friends and everyone's excited at the idea of what we're about to create. Hi, Johnny. It's James from wrestling epicenter, interactive wrestling radio. Um, last time I spoke to you, we were, we were talking about, Lucha Underground, and I got to tell you, when you came out on Impact, my he's now eight, uh, eight year old went nuts. But after the show, he kind of said to me, "But what does that mean for Lucha Underground?" I had no idea how to answer it, so I thought this might be the perfect option to ask you, "What does this mean for the future of Lucha Underground?" Well, um, I think one of the most exciting things happening right now in wrestling is this partnership between GFW and AAA and NOAA. And because of this partnership, there's going to be a lot of talent exchanges. Eddie Edwards, for example, just won the NOAA title. We've got um, Hijo de Fantasma, Tejano, and Pagano from AAA. We've got Garza and LAX from Conan's promotion, The Crash. And um, all these, I mean, all these four major companies now are working together. And to me, it's really interesting it's like uh, the sum of all these parts is, is greater than any one um, of these promotions by itself. So as far as um, what's happening with Lucha Underground in general and me with, working with Lucha Underground, um, Lucha Underground is planning on doing a season four. I'm planning on continuing my relationship with Lucha Underground into season four. The specific dates for the start of the tapings have not yet been released. And um, I'm hoping they're ASAP because I can't wait to get back to the temple. But um, in the meantime, that's what's so cool about GFW is the opportunity to have all these new matchups and potentially have some crossover now with GFW and Lucha Underground. Fingers crossed for that in in the future. Hello there. It's Aaron Francis from In Rain Pop. Um, The main question I want to ask you is like... um, yeah, at the moment, you've wrestled um, internationally with GFW because you've got working relationships with AAA, NOAA, The Crash, etc. Will we see you on this side of the pond, like in Britain or Ireland or anywhere like that anytime soon? Um, I've got a couple of things that I've been, been talking about. Uh, a buddy of mine recently took over IPW and um, is talking about having um, me and Joey Mercury come out and do a tag match on December 17th. Um, I'm still champion of five star wrestling. Um, I know they've announced a bunch a bunch of dates in uh, 2018, or if they <laughs> if they haven't announced them, they're planning on it and haven't gotten around to it yet. But um, specifically, when and for what promotion, I don't know. But I love working in the UK, and um, I'm planning to to get back there sometime before the end of this year. Mr. Impact, thank you so much for, uh, I like that name, Mr. Impact. Thank you so much for uh, having me on. This is Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. How are you today, sir? Doing great. I like uh, I like being referred to as Mr. Impact. It sounds funny. <laughs> <laughs> it, does. it does. It kind of goes. Um, my question is a little bit of a serious question. Uh, we, all right, well, you did work 
over again Lucha Underground with uh, the young lady, Sexy Star. And and from what I know and from what I've heard, you have a pretty good reputation as a pretty good dude in the industry. Now, with all that being said, what are your honest feelings regarding what happened between Rosemary and Sexy Star over at Triple, I'm sorry, not Triple A, but Lucha Underground? And how was it working with, with Sexy Star? Did you find her at all to be dangerous? Um, so, uh, first of all, the incident you're referring to, I believe, was at Triple Mania. In, uh, it was for Triple A just on uh, August 26th uh, between Sexy Star and Rosemary. During the match, um, I feel like there was friction between Sexy Star and uh, the other girls, not necessarily Rosemary. But the, like, uh, actually, not her at all. That was Rosemary's first time to Mexico. The other women in the match and Sexy Star um, looked like they had some issues that they decided to resolve during the match, which uh, is is unprofessional in my opinion. And um, the match suffered because of it, and tensions ran high. And uh, in my in my opinion, because she was in a heightened state of uh, aggravation or whatever it was. I felt like she took that out on Rosemary for no reason. Hey, Johnny, this is Sam Pierce from Fine Network Toronto. Uh, You've been really successful in uh, the wrestling, film, and television industry. Uh, How do you balance them to ensure that you're always performing at your best? Between uh, wrestling and film? Yeah, and uh, television as well. Well, I'm... uh, sitting in my car right now in rush hour traffic on the way to an audition <laughs> for one <laughs> um, for two it's uh it's not easy it's just about a lot of time management and prioritization so entertainment in general to me boils down to making people feel something and whether it's tv or film or pro wrestling, the pe- people watch to feel something, to feel an emotion. So in any of those forms, the story that we're telling in the ring or on the TV show or in the movie is, is written and designed to, uh, to convey that emotion. And if it's done well, it's successful and people like it, they can relate and they want more honing into that like really is the core of entertainment is uh to entertain people to make them feel something is uh is one of like the first epiphanies that um that i had about just entertainment in general and um that's something that vince mcmahon always talked about um the point of wrestling is entertainment and he would always say entertain my ass i need to be entertained when you're in the ring and um that using that is kind of like the uh the constant between every form of entertainment makes it easier to transition back and forth because once you realize that's the point of it, it's storytelling, and then the tools are different after that. Film and TV, your performances are more nuanced. You almost have to have your body and mind filled up with thoughts and emotions but contain them so the camera can zoom in close in your face and pull what you're thinking and feeling wrestling is different because it's almost like theater in the round there's an arena full of people and what makes pro wrestling pro wrestling is it's this performance art the character is a crowd and your feelings and actions need to be bigger so they can fire the crowd up and um when i was uh so anyway that's what i love about pro wrestling it's a it's it's supposed to be something that fires people up and gets people to get rowdy, yell, heckle, cheer, and boo. And uh, that's what I did when I, when I was a kid. So in that long rambling answer, I guess knowing what the point of entertainment is and taking everything one day at a time is how I balance it. Hey, Johnny, there's a quick follow-up to that question. Talk to us about Boone the Bounty Hunter. And uh, I believe that's a five-year project for you. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for asking about Boone. So 
I was a film major at UC Davis before I got into wrestling. And um, I knew that I wanted to do action movies pretty much my whole life. So um, when I left WWE at the end of 2011, I knew I wanted to do a movie. And I didn't know it was going to be Boone the Bounty Hunter at the time. But I wrote wrote a movie. It was like a sci-fi action thing that I ended up just throwing away because it wasn't that good. And then I started working on Boone with, uh, with a buddy of mine. And the idea of the movie first conceptually was that I wanted to do a movie where the action was a combo of parkour, pro wrestling, and MMA, all the stuff that I'm best at. And the character is this goofy, reluctant hero, kind of every man type of guy with a boyish arrogance that uh, is fun because he gets to say goofy things but also in an endearing way so as to not uh, alienate people. Anyway, so uh, that was what we set out uh, to write when we started Boone. And then it evolved and it became about Boone, the reality show bounty hunter who Boone's dudes like Kevin Sorbo and Jonathan Lipnicki for his reality TV show. And when uh, the show was going to be canceled because of ratings, he decided to go to Mexico after a real criminal to save your show. That's the, that's the gist of the plot of the movie. But um, we can, making movies is hard. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> so from the time I started writing it to uh, the time we shot it was two and a half years. And then it took another two years of post-production. And then um, getting the, distri- like, the distribution deal until, until now, where it's, it's out on DVD everywhere, Amazon, Walmart, Dollar General. And it's on VOD, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, Xbox, Video, Voodoo, places like that. Um, took a really long time. But uh, Boone is the movie that I've done that I'm by far the most proud of. And people that have seen it have responded really well to it. Um, there's a lot of people that really liked it. And <laughs> call me up with uh, with Boone quotes, Boone Voyage, Boone Matata, stuff like that. And... Um, if uh, you're on this call and you haven't seen Boone, uh, please go out of your way to check it out. And um, check, tell everyone that uh, is listening or reading this to uh, go out of their way to check out Boone. Because if you're a fan of pro wrestling and the things that I've done in the squared circle or six-sided circle now, <laughs> uh, you got to check out the stuff that I pulled off in Boone the Bounty Hunter. Hey, Johnny, this is Graham Matthews with HiddenRoad.com. Uh, you've had a long and well-documented journey in getting to GFW between your work in AAA and Lucha Underground, when most fans expected you to join GFW immediately following your WWE departure back in 2011. Uh, do you think now is a better time for you to come into the company as opposed to six years ago, considering how much you've grown as a performer? Yeah, I'm, I couldn't be happier with the way that it worked out. And the reason I didn't come right away was because when I left WWE, um, it wasn't like I, I left on bad terms. I was I was planning on just taking a year off, and um, I left because I wanted to do to do movies and um, to make that a uh, to make that movie that ended up taking a lot longer than I thought. So I talked to uh, Lagana, Taz, Dixie, and um, and Big John, Big John Gaborg several times back then, and it just never really uh, happened because I didn't want to. Uh, take myself out of Los Angeles then um well like you said well-documented journey all that stuff happened (laughs) and uh I ended up in a situation where I was working for Reach Underground working for AAA and there's an opportunity to start having all these promotions work together and I could represent all three of these companies at the same time and still have uh, enough control of my time to uh, to write movies, to, to audition, to do fun shorts and things, which is ultimately all I wanted with, uh, well, as with WWE, it was a little bit more creative autonomy. So for me personally, this is the perfect time. And I would say that's first. And then secondary, for me professionally, I'm the best I've ever been physically in the ring and also psychologically when it comes to understanding what a pro wrestler is supposed to do, basically how to, how to have good matches, 
what your job is when you're in the ring. Ryan right here for Main Event Radio. Johnny, I wanted to know your thoughts on Eddie Edwards winning the DHC championship in Japan. Um, I don't know Eddie really well. Um, I've met him a couple times, and then I uh, got to work with him at GFW, and uh, always liked him and was super impressed with uh, his ability and knowledge at, uh, at GFW. And um, talk about someone who's really earned it, man. He's, he's been around forever. He's wrestled all all over the world. And uh, I know winning that NOAA championship meant a ton to him. And um, it was one of those things when I saw it, it just put a huge smile on my face. Um, and he's a really good dude, but also a really deserving and talented guy. And, uh, I, yeah, really happy for him. Really happy to see that. Johnny, this is Jim Barcelona, MiamiHerald.com. You were talking about acting and University of California Davis. How has the acting training help you, or did it help you when you were getting involved in pro wrestling? I mean, it's uh, I mean, really, like pro wrestling involves performance and acting. So sometimes it, the beginning of my career, it helped, and sometimes it hurt because there there are different skill sets. Um, acting especially for film and TV is, is different than, than wrestling. And there's some crossover, but really understanding character work is what helps me the most. So like figuring out who you are as a person, who you are in the ring or who you are while you're playing a character for a, for a movie, for example, how is that similar to who you are in real life? How is that different from who, who you are in real life? what do people expect from you when they see you? How are you perceived by people and realistically assessing yourself? And then wrestling is different than uh, film and TV because a lot of your character creation, a lot of who you are really comes down to who you are as a person and turning up attributes about yourself that resonate with people that people like. So I think really just the introspection required to be an actor is what helps the most with pro wrestling. What's up, Johnny? This is Ryan Fisher from Total Wrestling Magazine. Um, last week, I was talking to Eli Drake, and you made your debut in the match and when he won the GFW Global title, and he said uh, he st- that you strike him as a guy who's more about style than substance. Like, I would want to get your opinion on that comment. Oh, man. Like the pot calling the kettle black, right? <laughs> I would say uh, Eli Drake is definitely more style than substance. Unfortunately for him, though, his style is kind of crap, too. Um, as far as me going like more style than substance, I mean, maybe he's confusing hard work for uh, style over substance because, in my opinion, part of the job of a, of a professional wrestler is to evolve mentally, emotionally, physically, and at the end of my WWE run, I started integrating a lot of parkour into my pro wrestling moveset. And if that's what he's referring to, then he's thoroughly mistaken. Because by me spending a, hours in parkour gyms and gymnastic centers for the past couple of years, um, I mean, hours a couple of days a week, to uh, maintain my physical ability and improve my physical ability, that's not uh, style over substance. That's what pro wrestlers should be doing. And that's what I've done. Um, and he's spending all that time uh, lifting weights like a meathead at uh, LA Fitness, training like Dorian Yates. And um, as a result, his training mentality is, is stuck about 20 years in the past. And when we wrestle, I think it's going to be obvious the difference between those two training philosophies, which one is more applicable to modern day professional wrestling. Hi, this is Jeremy Walker from Real Sport. Um, wanted to follow up on the, the questions about your um, film and uh, TV career so far, Johnny. I uh, wanted to know what it was like working with um, Jason David Frank and others on um, Ninjak versus the Valiant Universe. I'm really excited for Ninjak vs. The Valiant Universe. The trailer, I believe, is going to be released uh, this week. Um, 
Jason David Frank, Derek Saylor, Kevin Porter, Mike Rowe from Arrow, um, Sierra Foster. The uh, the cast of, of this uh, digital series, in my mind, is a 10 out of 10. Everybody is uniquely them and perfect fits for their own specific characters. Um, outside of that, I feel like I've become legitimate bros with a uh, with just David Frank and Derek and Mike, uh, which is one of the, my favorite things about working in a creative industry. It's because you're, when you're working together with someone creatively, really cut a lot of the superficial shit quickly because you two have to relate as your characters sometimes in really highly emotional circumstances. So, Basically, it's been it's been great. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of uh, Jason David Frank. He's super talented, and the rest of the cast is too. That goes for uh, Josh Dinesh, the guys that are owning own and run Valiant, as well as uh, Aaron and Sean, the the director and um, sound editor for uh, Bat in the Sun. I think uh, when that trailer drops, people's minds are going to be blown. Hello, John. This is uh, Alon Levine from the Israeli Wrestling Community, and uh, it's a real honor talking to you. Um, I don't know if you know, but you're huge here in Israel, and uh, friends with went nuts when you debuted in uh, GFW. Um, now, you've been wrestling for 15 years. Uh, what do you think about the modern, modern wrestling style related to wrestling matches 10, 15 years ago? That's a good question. Because to me, that's a, I mean, I, I can talk forever about that. I think that's one of the coolest things about uh, modern day wrestling is um, the evolution of, of the pacing and the moves and the, the current state of independent wrestling. I, uh, I really had to update my style and thinking. So I mean, when I first started and I was learning from, uh, from guys like Jim, Corn- Jim Cornette, who's now at Impact, which, <laughs> which is super funny and cool. And, uh, Al Snow, Danny Davis, even like the, and then getting up on the road with uh, with Fit, Finley, and Arn, and Vince, and a lot of uh, the psychology of what worked, even when I started back then in 2003, 4, 5, 6, is now, if you did what um, I do every weekend on independent wrestling shows, um, this weekend, Mondo Lucha in Milwaukee, and uh, in that show in New York, I think we would get chewed out by a <laughs> by anyone in the business who who saw the match if if it was uh, that match 15 years ago. Now, is that a good or a bad thing? I don't know. It's hard to decide whether it's it's a good or a bad thing. But I think ultimately, because wrestling is entertainment and it exists for the fans that come to see, that seems to be the driving force of why wrestling has evolved because it's what fans respond to. It's what fans make the most noise, most noise for. So um, being a part of the wrestling industry is really about making sure you stay relevant, making sure the stuff that you're doing is stuff that uh, fans want to see now and not 10 years ago. And that's one of the, uh, the things that I'm excited about being at GFW for is uh, applying all my <laughs> wrestling philosophy and knowledge and things that I've I've picked up wrestling from places like AAW to Defy to Wrestle Circus and Lucha Underground and AAA and all the all the other places all over the world to GFW and I think the uh, the melting pot of what I bring to the table versus what's what's there and what everyone else brings to the table is the, the heart of wrestling is what makes it interesting. And, and you nailed it. You're right. Um, wrestling is evolving, which is why I, a lot of times I refer to uh, 2017 as Mundo 17, or I guess in this case, Impact 17. Mm. All righty. We'll, we will open it up for a second question if you people have one, so feel free to chime in. We did, we did get an email question for you, Johnny. Uh, a reporter wants to know where can he buy – the sunglasses that you wear? The sunglasses that I wear, probably your best bet is to get them on Pro Wrestling Tees. 
Um, I got a couple of t-shirts up on that site for sale, but also, uh, also you can get the Mundo glasses there. All righty. Hey, Johnny, it's Big Ray for OneWrestling.com again. You know, one of the questions I had to ask you, I wanted to ask you actually earlier was, you know, you've been at in every, every organization, and you've succeeded in every organization. You've done extremely well, and I've been a big fan of your work for many, many years. With all that being said, there are a lot of young up-and-coming wrestlers, and the new locker room that you're in is a, di- is a diverse one, excuse me. So what do you have to say to, or what kind of, uh, what kind of, uh, let's just say, um, What's the word I'm looking for? I'm drawing a blank. What's the, uh, what do you have to say to the young talent that's coming up right now? And what kind of, uh, I'm drawing a blank, Johnny, but I think you have an idea of what I'm asking you. Yeah. Um, advice? Yeah, that, that's the word. Exactly. What kind of advice do you, <laughs> unbelievable, what kind of advice do you want to give to the young talent that not only are you working with, but the talent that may be listening to this or the talent that may be coming up in the future? Man, to, uh, the young talent that are coming up in the future really I mean I used to hate when people say this when I was when I was a young talent coming up but the young talent is the future of the business and uh, it's not going to be on my shoulders forever at some point it's going to be on the Desmond Xavier the Ricochet the Shane Strickland solely on their shoulders and that would be passing down knowledge to uh, the generation that's after them. But um, to the young talent, I think uh, the best advice for me is uh, a couple things. Wrestling is a crazy business, and um, it drives a lot of people nuts because there's such a lack of control. So learning to... Uh, not worry about things you can't control and only worry about things that are within your ability to control is uh, one of the most important first lessons to learn. There's a lot you can control, though. Your in-ring ability, your physique, your promos, how you look, how you walk, how you talk. That's your job. You need to get as good at all those things as possible. The things you can't control depend on uh, maybe... Who's uh, who's running creative? Is somebody's uh, somebody's uncle, like a famous wrestler? Do they know somebody? Or someone who save a truck full of tapes from burning down, and now they're employed for life? There's there's things like that that uh, are out of your control that you can't worry about. But ultimately, like uh, Macho Man used to say, the cream of the crop rises to the top because in this business. People want to put their name on the most talented talent. So being being your best at every aspect of being a pro wrestler ultimately is going to result in you going the furthest in the business. Hi, Johnny. It's uh, Ryan from the Um Just wanted to ask you, you mentioned your background in film and college, and of course we know about um, your experience in Hollywood. Is there any chance that you'd want to get in production or creative in the wrestling business by chance? Thanks. Um, I've, I've thought about it. I've, I've thought about that several times. And uh, at some point, conceivably, yes. Because, uh, because I like variety though currently it feels like it's um a lot of the stuff that i think of when i'm not wrestling is uh for some reason i think of like feature films they're usually action comedies and um instead of trying to like fight that instinct usually i just write what i'm thinking of especially because i enjoy it i think if you if you don't enjoy writing it uh it comes out when you're (laughs) when you're reading someone's stuff back um, also anybody in the wrestling industry is involved somewhat in creative. I'm not necessarily like, a, in the creative department on any of the shows that I'm working for currently, but if I have ideas, I'll, uh, I can talk to Scott Zamore or Sanjay or big 
or Jeremy Borash, I can I can present ideas to them and we can discuss. Same thing with Lucha Underground, same thing with AAA. And, and ultimately, not everyone is in the same situation that I'm in where they can pick up the phone and make a call and have, uh, have, the, have the creative department pick up. But most people are because the uh, even even if you can't call Sanjay at home and at midnight, <laughs> um, all those people that I just mentioned are looking for new ideas and looking for good ideas. So anybody that's on the roster that has anything good will will be heard. Um, anyway, so that's a long way of saying uh, wrestlers are usually already in the creative department, whether they know it or not. Jim Varslow, MiamiEarl.com. Do you think Hollywood's attitude toward pro wrestlers has changed over the years because of the success of someone like The Rock in the industry? Definitely. I think wrestling right now is, is hot. Like Wrestling is a hot industry worldwide right now. And yeah, that's partly due to The Rock. I mean, he's He's on the cover of GQ, right? The highest paid, uh, or Forbes, the highest paid actor in Hollywood. But not only that, like one of the most prolific actor producers alive today. Uh, that dude is everywhere. He busts his ass. And um, because of that, he's got the respect of the entertainment community as well as the professional wrestling community and broken into just pop culture in general. So because uh, he's hot, I mean, you got Dave Bautista, who's become an A-list actor with uh, the stuff that he's done in Guardians, which is really, um, for me, was really cool to watch because it reminded me of uh, Dave. He's like a he's a big teddy bear. He's a super nice guy, and um, I think that came out in his performance um, when he was doing Drax. John Cena has stepped up his game also. He killed it so hard in Train Wrecks that now he's uh, he's getting more and more stuff and. Um, all of those things. Um, and Stone Cold Steve Austin is another one. I mean, he's a part of pop culture. He's uh, he's <laughs> he's hosting an EP of three different TV shows now, I think. And um, really, all that does is it does open doors for guys like me. And um, <laughs> all I need is a little a little hole for me to kick the door open wide because I'm uh, I'm hungry right now to get further into that world. Brian Ryder again for Main Event Radio. You mentioned Jason David Frank earlier in the call. Does he have any interest in getting involved with pro wrestling in any capacity? Yeah, him and I have talked about it. We're looking at doing a a tag match, like uh, me and him versus a couple of people. Like he's uh, he's tight with Booker T. They both live in Houston. And we're thinking about doing something like me and him versus uh, me and him versus two other guys. We haven't gone too far down that path yet at uh, one of Booker T's shows. Um, it might even be something we could do on Impact now since this is a GFW call. But uh, he he's a lifelong martial artist, and he knows how hard he worked at, uh, at karate and his karate school and training for stunt choreo. So I think he's a fan of pro wrestling. He loves the business, and he'd like to, uh, to be a part of it. I don't think he wants to be a full-time pro wrestler by any means. But... Uh, he just likes entertainment and is a fan of pro wrestling and thinks that it'd be fun to do a match. Hello there, it's Francis from In Ring Pop. Um, the main question I ask you, you, you come into GFW and on run head in the corner is bound for glory. Um, hopefully you would be going there, um, maybe taking on the global force, global champion, maybe against Eli Dre, but would you be defending maybe some of the other titles that you've won at Bound for Glory if he actually got that far? Oh, yeah. I'd put anything on the line against uh, Eli Drake. Um, when when we get there, if uh, if I'm still try campion of AAA, I'll put all those things on the line. Um, I'm that confident that I would leave Bound for Glory with uh, Eli's title if he still has it by then, if we have the match, if I still have my titles. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm really excited for Gone for Glory, though, man. This is one of the pay-per-views that's uh, the tent poles of Impact. And um, I remember watching it uh, past the 10 years I've been watching them 
Bound for Glory, and it, it's going to be a really cool thing to be a part of. Johnny, what's it like going through the airports with uh, three championship belts? It's a pain in the ass. Um, well, I'll be honest, it uh, it sucks because I'm I'm old school. I uh, always bring two bags, your bag that you never check. So that's got the titles and um, gear just in case of an emergency, in case they lose your bag and still perform. But they always pull all three titles out. Especially if you have three. If you have one, sometimes you can sneak through. Three titles in your bag, though, they pull all three out usually, and then, like, all the GSA people come over and then have time they want pictures, and it turns into a fiasco. <laughs> so you have to be at the airport three hours early, not the standard 90 minutes. Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, this is James with a Steel Chair Magazine once again. Is there a dream match that you would want to take part in? Any wrestler that's not necessarily in GFW or just anyone out there that you'd want to face? Any wrestler, anywhere. Um, man, uh, it'd be awesome to uh, to wrestle Okada. I've been a big fan of the stuff that's been going on with New Japan. Um, Daniel Bryan would be another dream match. Um, a lot of like some of the some of the bigger league guys right now, like uh, I put Bobby Lashley on the dream the dream match list, just because uh, it's been fascinating to see how well he's done in both MMA and pro wrestling. A true two sport athlete, and it's very rare. Um, it's also a good friend of mine. Let's see, um, man, like that's a tough question because I feel like there's too many dream matches. Macho Man was always my my dream match growing up, uh, a singles match against HBK. But some of these, I think, are never going to happen. The the ones with the potential are the the, the first ones that I've mentioned. Hey, Johnny. Uh, Graham Romita with InRemote.com again. Uh, similar to yourself, your former tag team partner, The Miz, has actually reinvented himself in a major way in recent years. And he's arguably, arguably better now than he was before. Uh, what have been your thoughts on his recent resurgence in the WWE? Have you kept in contact with him at all as well? Oh, yeah. We uh, we text back and forth all the time. Every time uh, my IMDb meter is higher than his, I can snap it and send it over to him and tell him that Blue the Bounty Hunter is better than Marine. <laughs> um, he's, uh, he's been killing it. And uh, I, I think it really comes down to the Miz is always emphatically himself. He uh, he never changed who he was. He's always, whether in the ring or in real life, kind of this, this loud, abrasive, confident guy. And um, he's also a really good friend and a loyal friend and um, <laughs> in smaller groups, really fun to hang out with. But uh, because he's got that quality that's remained consistent, he knows who he is in the ring and out of the ring. And I think that confident core of, uh, of of Mike Zanin is what's propelled him to the next level of success with wrestling. It's uh, it's, it's been really cool to see. I'd put him on the dream match list also. It'd be cool to, uh, I think it would be more fun to tag with him or kick his ass, but either one would be interesting. Hi, Jay. It's Ryan from Tell Wrestling again. I started asking you, talking about your dream matches, who your idols were, both in the wrestling business and in the film and TV business. Um, man, so wrestling idols, it's hard to, it's hard to pick, but Macho Man, HBK, Mr. Perfect, and The Rock. Mm-hmm. Film and TV, the, the first guys that I got really sucked into when I was a kid that I feel like made me into the, the man that I am today are, uh, Jet Li, Jackie Chan, John claude Van Dam. um, our, our 80s action heroes, um, Jack Burton from uh, Big Trouble in Little China. The, uh, those movies were the kind of movies that I, uh, I watched over and over again when I was a kid and loved them. I could quote them line for line and is, is why I, I became enamored with filmmaking and um, professional wrestling. It's what I grew up on. I grew up on action movies and pro wrestling. Hi, oh, this is Alan from the Israel Wrestling Community again. Uh, some of your uh, co-workers and friends, uh, such as uh, Chris Masters, uh, have been wrestling uh, in Israel. 
Uh, what have you heard about the Israeli wrestling scene? And uh, do you think there's any chance of you coming to wrestling to wrestle in Israel along with uh, JFW? Love to. I mean, uh, Chris, Chris uh, said that uh, he absolutely loved it over there and um, was, uh, was telling stories about how, uh, how awesome it was in, uh, in Israel. And for me, I... Uh, I just never been hit up by I don't I don't know who the promoter is in Israel, but if you listen to this, yeah, hit me up. I definitely like to make an impact in Israel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Johnny Impact, it's uh, Big Ray One Wrestling. Now, I, I have what you might call a keg, and you have a six-pack. So my question is, regarding your fitness, I mean, what do you do on a daily basis? What does Johnny Impact do to get those six-pack abs, and how do you maintain that physical condition, you know, wrestling year after year after year? Um, really, for, for me, first is uh, functional training. So i got a workout program called Out of Your Mind Fitness, and I fluctuate between that, um, some old-school bodybuilding stuff, and uh, lately DDP yoga. Um, I was a little hesitant at first because I thought uh, I was in better shape than uh, someone that used DDP yoga, but basically I got my ass kicked by DDP yoga <laughs> and, uh, and, and learned that there's a lot of cool injury um, prevention stuff and a lot of conditioning, but um, that, that you get with DDP yoga. But ultimately, that's kind of that's the kind of the core, the foundation of your house is your your training regimen. So I train like a maniac. I'm a little bit OCD about it. Even I'll, I'll go some sort of resistance training, functional training, almost every day. Usually six days a week at least, like uh, one to two hours of that. Then in addition to that probably four days a week um, doing some sort of skill training or wrestling. And skill training is, is boxing, parkour, martial arts, kicking, uh, tricking, that kind of thing, or, or pro wrestling training. So that basically has got like the, the foundation of uh, my movement patterns, like my muscle mass, like what, what my body is used to do. And then uh, to really to lean out to get a six-pack, after you have your training regimen set, it's going to come down to nutrition. And uh, that's an answer that a lot of people don't like to hear, but it's true. <laughs> you are what you eat. And um, basically for me, what works best is uh, simple diet rules and consistency. Bro, 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 you got to do some more DDP yoga, bro. <laughs> Oh man, don't knock it. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's amazing. And um, and yeah, dude, DDP is a, DDP is a unique person. He's uh, always promoting himself. He's always promoting his stuff, and uh, it's cool to see because he believes in it. And also, he's he's one of the, uh, the most altruistic, wrestlers that I've ever met. He'll he'll bend over backwards to help anybody. Hi, it's Jeremy Walker from Real Sport again. Johnny, do you still keep in contact with uh, Matt Capitelli, and how's he doing these days, if you do? Um, did you see what happened with him recently? Um, they, uh, they they found some more uh, cancerous cells in his brain, and he's going to have to go back to uh, treatments, which sucks. I... Uh, I was going to say I saw him not too long ago, but I guess it was a few months back now. Um, I, uh, I did a, I did a show in uh, Louisville at OVW, and um, and him and I hung out and caught up for a couple of days. It was it was awesome actually. We talked about tough enough and how crazy it was that we both moved to Louisville together, roommates back then, and that was before he'd uh, he'd relapsed or they they noticed anything. And um, I say this about Matt Capitelli, like. Uh, he to this day is one of the most positive people I've ever met, and um, his run of uh, injuries and cancer and uh, and bad luck has been harder than just about anyone I know. And um, he's always remained positive, and uh, 
he's actually somebody that I think about when I think I'm having a, a hard time or a shit day. Um, I think about things that he's dealt with and how positive he's remained throughout everything. But, um, but yeah, I, I talk to him still. I talk to him, uh, I, I'd say at least once a month, sometimes more. We have time just for a couple more questions, so we'll try to rapid fire through the last few we have. Hello there, it's Francis from Main Ring Pop again. Um, the main thing I want to ask you, how fun it is working with your, um, your other half um, working in GFW at the moment? Oh, are you talking about Taya Valkyrie? Yeah. She, uh, she is so excited to be working with GFW, um, and I have loved the, uh, the entrance, her music. Um, you guys need to tune in Thursday to, uh, to see her debut, I believe. Um, she's, uh, she's been loving it and has been really happy. And, um, you know what they say when, uh, when your girl is happy, you're happy. And so, uh, that's, that's part of why I've been loving GFW so much. Hi, John. It's Ryan from Total Wrestling again. I thought I'd pick up on the rumors last year of perhaps a return to the WWE around the time of the brand split, and obviously that didn't happen, but you say you leave on good terms. Is there a chance you could perhaps go back there one day? Um, it, it's hard to say because I believe so, but um, it's, it's ultimately not completely up to me. Um, I will, though, say that I'm extremely happy right now with... Uh, with my life and my career, with uh, TFW, with Lucha, with uh, AAA, and with, I don't even have enough time to uh, to wrestle all of the shows that they those companies have. And I also am afforded the opportunity, like I mentioned earlier, to uh, pursue my own projects, to uh, to make Boone the Bounty Hunter, basically, and um, to get further into the entertainment industry. Um, so as far as like. Uh, I come back to WWE. There are a ton of people on the roster that I haven't had the chance to work with. Love to uh, work circles around Rollins and Reigns. <laughs> Have matches with the uh, with the Miz, Finn Balor, Lesnar, Samoa Joe. Like all those, all those are exciting matchups and would be great for me. But sometimes I sit back and think, like, what's to say that those matches couldn't necessarily happen in GFW or Lucha Underground because the business changes so quickly. So, as as far as that goes, um, sure it's possible, but I'm really happy with where I'm at right now. Hey, Johnny Graham Matthews from Pinterot.com again. Uh, between Johnny Nitro, John Morrison, and Johnny Mundo, you've obviously had a lot of memes in wrestling. And this might be a simple question, but how did the Johnny Impact ring name come about? Um, I think it came up as a as a, a little bit of a joke first because we were thinking about. All right, well, um, Mundo is a Lucha Underground name, and um, we wanted to do something different, so we started, like, brainstorming names, and I forget who said Johnny Impact first, but it was, like, kind of like, Johnny Impact. <laughs> and then uh, everyone thought about it for an extra couple of seconds, and like, you know, <laughs> that could work. <laughs> it's a little bit cheesy and on the nose, but uh, but it's also fun, and wrestling should be fun first and foremost. And um, I've actually really grown to like it. Hey, uh, this is Riju from Sportskira. My question is that you have you having worked with Alberto El Patron, a man who's always at the center of controversy. What's your impression of him as a performer and as a human being? Um, center, center of controversy is a good way to describe Alberto. I've uh, I've had a lot of matches with him, and um, I've always been impressed with him in the ring. Uh, the season finale of uh, Lucha Underground. Season one was me and him. I had a great singles match with him in Lucha Underground. I worked with him a handful of times when we were working together with WWE. Out of the ring, my the Alberto that I know and hang out with is uh, <laughs> is uh, raising hell and having a good time hanging out at, at bars and clubs, and I've had a lot of really good times with Alberto. And as, as far as uh, the controversy and the stuff that he's dealing with, um, for specifics on that, you'd have to talk to him. But from my standpoint, I've always had a really good time with that guy. <laughs> He's ridiculous. He's super fun, though. All righty, Johnny. We have time for one final question, and 
As usual, Ryan, the dance floor is yours. Hey, Johnny Ryan from the gorilla position dot com. Um, you wrestled on uh, some of the biggest stages in the world. And at the same time, you, you mentioned you've kind of been on a six year journey since. So if you win the title to close bound for glory and you, you're hoisting the belt, would you say uh, things have come full circle? And um, how are you going to feel if that happens? Thanks. Have a great day. Man. Um, well, that's an easy way to answer it since you just threw the answer in the question. Yeah, things have come full circle or full hexagon, so to speak. <laughs> um, winning a, if, if I, if I can be Eli Drake and, and win the title at Bound for Glory, it would be one of the highest honors um, that I've achieved in my career. And I hope that, uh, I hope that match happens. I hope that's the case because I would like nothing better than to take GFW and, um, make it into something great that everybody loves. And um, I feel like it's it's there now, but I want the chance to take the GFW ball and run into uh, the end zone of wrestling eternity with it, spike it, and then show everybody what I think the best pro wrestling in the world could be and is. And the GFW roster right now has the talent to do that. And if you think about the talent rosters of GFW, Lucha Underground, AAA, and NOAA, I think that is the biggest and most interesting assortment of companies and wrestlers in the world. And ultimately, interesting and entertaining is what people watch for. So any other company in the world not involved with what we're doing and what I'm doing had better watch their ass. All righty, Johnny, I, I know you're uh, heading to an uh, uh, audition now, so we won't take up any more of your time. You've given us an hour plus. Give us a final thought as we uh, wrap it up for today. Well, um, ultimately, uh, wrestling is about entertainment, and uh, the opportunity to entertain people at GFW, the fans that are watching on Pop TV and worldwide, is, uh, is an honor. It's always an honor to, to get into the ring. And um, anyone that's listening to this, I hope you'll uh, you'll watch Lucha Underground on Wednesday nights and Impact Wrestling on Pop TV on Thursday nights. Follow me on Twitter at the Real Morrison. Follow me on Instagram at John Hennigan. Check out my Facebook, John Morrison. Go out of your way to watch Boone the Bounty Hunter, and also please rate and review Boone on IMDb, Amazon, iTunes, Rotten Tomatoes, and um, and all the other ones too. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, excited to do things that have never been done before in wrestling. To find out what I'm talking about, make sure to tune into those shows. Johnny, thank you so much. And I, uh, again, thank uh, everybody from the media who's called in today. And please don't forget, next week we will have a, a, a big one. We're going to talk GFW Creative with the three guys that are running it right now, Big John, Scott Demore, and Sanjay Dutt. So, Stay tuned for that next week here on the GFW Media Teleconference. Q&A session is over. Goodbye. The workout never stops. It never gets easier. You're not born with rock-hard abs. You're not born with the ability to jump off the top rope. This is Lucha Underground. You have to earn everything with hard work and sweat. Johnny Mundo on Lucha Underground. New episode Wednesday at 8 p.m. on El Rey Network. Sponsored by Cricket Wireless. Something to smile about.